thanks so much for coming today. I'm just going to ask you to kind of take your seat, um, grab a drink, grab something to eat. I'm really uh, excited about this town hall meeting. Um, hey. Thankful to the faculty members who are here showing support, willing to have an open dialogue with us. And so without further ado, I want to introduce Allison Mears, the Dean of here at School of Design Strategies, and have her introduce us. Great. Hi. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. I'm going to read a few remarks because I'm a terrible, spontaneous speaker. And I always forget the really important things afterwards. And I, So I'll just speak and speak and speak. And then at the end, I'll say, well, I forgot the critical thing that I meant to say. So I just wrote some little remarks that I thought I'd read to you. But um, we all, I think, um, the way we work at Parsons as faculty is that we um, really believe in this co kind of collaborative approach to education and dialogue and to being in this institution. I, in particular, I, that's the way I work in kind of everything I do in my design work, in my interactions with faculty. And, um, and even though I am the dean of the school, I, I hope I don't act in this kind of very authoritarian or overarching way that I really like to feel. I like to think of myself as being faculty, and I'm essentially faculty. When people say, well, you're an academic, I'm like, well, really? No, I'm faculty, I teach, and I happen to be in this position at this point in time. So I really believe in this way, this form of interaction, that we all come together and we talk about the things that are important to us and that we work on the issues that we're struggling with. And, um, you know, in the end, that we make something which is better, better than the sum of us, you know, better than us individually, that really becomes something that's um, extraordinary and important. So I'm glad you all turned up this evening, and I'll read some of my little remarks here, which we can ignore afterwards and edit if you like. But um, I do, as I say, welcome this opportunity to meet with you all. I've met with all of the graduate students this semester. We have a lot of them working with us on the ninth floor, and we'd love if more of you would join us as as research assistants, as, um, as uh, graduate students who help kind of craft the school in an administrative way, in a supportive way, we, I, I, I in particular love to, to be around you also. Um, so for me, what began in August as a, um, a program that was basically going, going to be online, I, I've been in this position since July of last year, and then was confronted in August with a program that went from being an online program to an on-site program. So was that. Yeah, so it was a little uh, trial by fire, I think, for me. Um, but you know, I'm up for anything. I'm up from Australia. We'll do anything, anywhere, at any time. We're very open to new challenges. Um, so, but it was conceived, I think, in the abstract as a new approach to a graduate business education. And so, we're in the midst of it becoming a reality. And so, for us, it's that kind of that um, conception, inception, um, rolling it out, and then testing it to see what works and what doesn't work. It's this constantly evolving thing. It's never static. Um, and I always, uh, I try to think about, and for me, the business piece of this is like, why Parsons? Why would we have a business program at Parsons? So I'm constantly looking for the, the answer to that question. And um, you know, when we think about the new school and with the strong roots at the new school in areas of social inclusion and tolerance, it's particularly important to remember that. And as designers at Parsons, we're deeply rooted in a trade and an industrial kind of past. That's where we come from as designers at Parsons. But we go through this process of invention, reinvention, and creation um, and trying to imagine where we are and what's, where we sit within society, I think. So this is a constant process for us here. Um, and then there's this, you know, we're in the 21st century now, guys. We're not in the 19th century. It's not about kind of industry so much anymore. So how do we, um, how do we imagine, you know, a, an education that is relevant in the 21st century? Um, uh, my friend and colleague Matt Robb invented this little phrase when we had a workshop recently for faculty and we were trying to really talk about our own school, the School of Design Strategies. What the hell does that mean, right? And he coined this little phrase and he said, you know, it's not business as usual. And for me, this is this little rallying cry for us. It's not business as usual. It's not, we're not an MBA program here. And in fact, we want to think about the status quo in business. We want to think about the economy in different kinds of ways. And what does that mean, right? So we want to be at the forefront of this discussion. We don't want to just 
accept what is given to us in any of our programs, in the urban, in the business programs, in the, in the way that we operate in this school, we really want to chart a new course. Um, so we're trying to understand what a new economy might look like from both a design and a business standpoint at this intersection of these two things. Many of the tools we have as designers help us critique and understand the world from different points of view, and you know all of this, right? And, and I see you all acquiring these tools, whether they're a new acquisition or they're, they're an acquisition of the tools in a new way. Um, but we're not content to merely consider design in the abstract, and I'm really impressed with the way that you've entered into partnerships and into projects, um, and that you're really kind of exploring this new area of social entrepreneurship. To me, this is a discovery, and I actually didn't really realize it was something that would be a critical piece of your program, and a piece of the program that identifies you in a very different way than I think a lot of other programs. And it's particularly close to my own heart. It's the space that I work in. I'm particularly interested in how we can consider, you know, as I said, this new economy that um, addresses the 100% of us, not the 0.01% of us, whatever that is. Um, I talked a little bit about um, the way that I work as a collaborator. And I do think that, um, and I've always thought this even as a student, that uh, our understanding of education is created together, you know, together as faculty and as students. Um, and we're in this, um, we have this ideal opportunity right now to make sure that we work together to enhance, develop, and strengthen all of the opportunities that are open to you as students at Parsons. So your program continues to grow, and the enrollment for the upcoming, upcoming fall class is um, wildly successful, I would say. Um, so our task moving forward is to maintain these really high educational, educational standards that we develop for ourselves, that we challenge ourselves to, um, to meet, um, and to keep challenging you all to make a difference and to reinvent this field, this field that you're creating. I'm also interested as Dean of SDS in how your work intersects with the, um, the larger School of Design Strategies context, Parsons and the New School. So, um, so the way that we think of that, and even just the discussions that we had um, working with Drew around the web, is really kind of looking at these intersections with the urban programs. The urban programs, they always talk about kind of the, um, uh, well, they're all community-based projects, but it's really a lot of the work that they do has this financial base to it, and it's something that I think most urban students don't, they put to one side and they say, well, somebody else will take care of that. In our school, you guys could be the somebody else piece of this and really make proposals that um, have the ability to be transformative in that they can be implemented. I am all for the great idea, but I would um, love it if we could actually implement our ideas and make a change. So um, I think we have at the school this, um, this ability to bring um, the work that we do together in a way that's really powerful and effective. So, so thank you for inviting me. And I um, look forward to hearing from you all about your experience in this first year. And congratulations on completing a whole year of graduate school. And, um, and welcome. So thank you. Thank you so much, Allison. I uh, just want to turn the table to our wonderful program supporters, Andrew Tucker and Jessica. Is it, is it Jesse or Jessica? Jesse. Jesse. Does everyone know who Jesse is? Just please say hi to her. She has been a wonderful, wonderful um, leader in helping us organize all this, so please give her thanks. Um, they're going to share with us an initiative they're working on, which is the student blog, right? Mm -hmm. That is a representation of who we are as a community. And so we actually pull so up. So, everyone, Drew has been really instrumental in helping me to make this a reality. I know some of us met last semester about putting a site together, and so this is what we started to do. Um, Drew is going to walk you through it and talk about some of the things that exist now. And I just want you to know this is a very open platform. So as you're seeing this, please feel free to imagine new possibilities and see what can go from where. And we can talk about some specific potential developments after the walkthrough. Hey, I'm Drew. And first thing I want to do is apologize for having sent any of you even one more email than was necessary, because <laughs> I know you have a lot going on. But thank you so much for your response and for the content you've given me to share on the website. Um, 
it's for us. I think the most important thing is that this be a web, uh, a blog that you guys inform with your interest, your content, you know, the projects you are working on inside and outside of school, and that it be a place where you can communicate with one another as a cohort and with future cohorts or past cohorts, whatever. And then also um, a space to network with partners, um, and also a place for connectivity, like with outside with outside individuals and groups who might actually want to work with you around different things. Um, just a little bit about the blog. So here's here's the year about page. You're gonna see some people that you recognize. <laughs> There's some really great pictures. Um, again, this is kind of just like an introduction to the site. This is sort of um, telling you like what kind of space it is. Um, we also have a news space. My idea with the news space was to put really cool pictures like this on there. Um, also to link you to places that might give you like, so I know when I was coming in as a student, I really wanted a space to look at so that I could kind of figure out, what is this field? Like, who else is doing this work? It's a new field. It's kind of, kind of you know, it's fast-paced. I want to know who else is doing this work and what they're talking about, the people who are creating it. So the news site is supposed to do that. Right now, I'm doing my best trying to put things in there, but again, that's not my field, so I'm just trying to learn about you guys as I do it. So if you have suggestions, please tell me where to look. Um, this Design Mind website is fantastic, just so you know. I've been reading it all day. Um, the event page, again, is just to keep you updated on what's going on within the school. I don't think there's any reason that it couldn't have events that are happening outside for you guys, but we really would like to have a lot of stuff that's happening at Parsons that you guys are putting on or that's happening here that we can connect other people to. Um, and as we develop the events page, we can, we can have sections. So yeah. we have more Parsons-specific sections. And then also because so many of your classmates exist online all over the world, we can have a kind of global networking thing we can go into later where we're really presenting the projects and the promotions of your studios wherever they exist. Yeah. So, you know, the, the program home is wherever any of the students are and whatever any of you guys are working on. Mm -hmm. So we need pictures here, right? So we can recognize everyone. Yeah, I already now I have everyone's name, but I would love to have a small screenshot of each of you. Mm -hmm. um, and there, I know there's a couple people that are missing. It's not a shaming technique. Um, Sorry, that's your name. Give us your bios. I was going to write something fake just to have everybody. Um, but yeah, please do because there's your bio as soon as you can. Student projects. This is going to change a lot. Um, there's a couple people working on this. Um, my idea was to take these amazing pictures of you guys creating this, these fantastic projects and actually put some context on them. Um, one of them. One of them we have that. We have some um, quotes talking about the different kinds of work that was used to accomplish this project, which is, I think, amazing. But I would love to have more context to make it more rich. Um, and again, these will, these will be more complex as we go, and we can add more. Um, we have a Meet the Director page. What's your picture? Yeah, we have to get a picture. There's some beautiful ones out there. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah. See, yeah, I will sure. look forward to there, there are a lot of good ones, but you have to check in because people really want to be in control of that piece. That's really important to people. Um, some of your faculty, which I think is great. This is some of the folks who sent us pictures right off the bat. So here as well, some of the style aspects are still being developed, mm -hmm. but we're kind of showing you a content map. Right. Um, and then the resource, whoops, sorry, the resource page is important because I think this could be a space, uh, a site for different um, types of research you might want to do or things you want to look at, uh, different kinds of articles that might inform what kind of work you're doing, um, things that you found important as you came, as you went through the process that you would like the other people coming up behind you to read. Um, so that's kind of what this this piece of the page could be, and, it, and it, that can change, of course. Um, and then finally is this idea of this global design network, and I, and I think Jess is going to talk a little bit about it. Sure. Well, so this is something that's, I think, the most exciting about your program, and I was just kind of referencing it. Just, you guys are everywhere, and there's so much promise to you how this is expanding and how everyone will want a piece of you. and how wonderful you guys will be when you graduate and how wonderful you'll be now. And there is this really wonderful element where what you're producing now doesn't exist in many places. So there's a certain echelon and there's a certain exclusivity, but we want you to have access to everything that's going on and access each other. So the idea is to have this platform um, where we can start. Um, this is where I'm most excited for you guys to have ideas too, because um, I want this um, this visual kind of building out. So your ideas that happen, um, your projects as they happen, your finalized projects once they're completed, what you're doing outside of the program exactly that's related to the program, what you're doing with each other even though you're really far away from each other, what you're doing in your businesses. So there's this 
kind of component of connectivity that we want to make. This is why you can see all the people on the globe in their little <laughs> circles. So one thing we thought of um, because of RIA is this possibility of using um, Neurally, which I think some of you guys are already using for your studio spaces. And I don't know how you feel about that um, as, as a kind of public platform, but some of the components behind it can be very exciting because it's got this kind of board, right? And you're sharing your stuff. I mean, um, there are also kind of more streamlined things. We started to research things like advertising agencies, even um, the kind of more cutting edge ones like Creature in Seattle or in Portland, Wyman Kennedy. Not because you guys are advertisers, but because they have this component of um, network and they have this kind of saleability and the streamlined design and they are managing products in a lot of ways and they're managing the way people move and the way that people see things. So the way they are representing themselves is kind of innovative and exciting. We looked at a bunch of different um, organizations to see these kinds of platforms but I would be really excited for this to absorb this and come back with feedback majorly. And also so right now what we have as a team is so Drew has been helping a great deal with kind of being the content editor. And then recently we started talking with Takao about being kind of a reporter um, and bringing in the specific student flavor of things. Um, and then we have also Sabrina, who's another one of our grad assistants, and she has a lot of design skills. So we can really grow from here into making this look ever more impressive, be something that's really going to be an asset for you as you become an alumni, as we tie it in with your other projects. Um, we, we just we want it to look as, as great as you guys can imagine it and to reach as far as you need it to reach. And so we can also change who's participating if different students want to grab in for a semester and you know put their little piece into it. That's also possible. And we really want it to be a functional space for you guys too. So don't think, don't think of it so much as like a blog that you check in on. Think of it as a tool that you can use to advertise yourself, but like really show the meat of the projects you're doing. And if you want to turn it into a space where you're like promoting yourself to firms outside or bringing firms in to become you know, like partners with, that's fine. Like just whatever you can give us, we can use to, yeah. to create and make it a more rich site. And we're absolutely willing to spend the time on that. Yes. Um, but just the last thing I think I want to mention is um, what's really, like from here, what we really need is as much feedback from you guys as we can get. Feel free to flood me with emails. Now is your time to get me back for all the emails I sent you. <laughs> um, we really want to know who you are, uh, who you're working with, where you are, what projects you're working with on, and that kind of information that we can put on this. Um, the more content, the more context for that content, the better. Um, and I'll keep in touch with you about uh, anything I need. But yeah, from the, from this point on, like you guys, anything you can give us is great. Feed us. Yeah. Oh, and it reminds me of one last thing. John and I wanted to start putting together an advisory board for the program. So this would kind of include certain partners or high-level kind of people out in the world, the professionals that you might want to work with. Um, it might be also a couple of students, I think maybe one faculty member on rotation, and just kind of be an activity advisory board, not anything that would stick you into long meetings, but the idea that, that you have a kind of guiding force and you have a network that's growing in some kind of way. So if you have suggestions about different members you'd like to see or different kinds of partnerships you'd like us to establish in that kind of way, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm actually going to parlay off of uh, Jesse's presentation there and wanted to share with you an idea that I've been working on with some of your colleagues and our classmates. So Jamil and Taryn, raise your hands. Cool. So the three of us. Uh, we met a month ago, and um, we came up with an idea to build a alum network exclusive to our program. And so how I'm going to pitch this to you is, think of it this way, right? Most people pay $250,000 to get their MBA from Wharton, Harvard, Stanford. And what they're doing is not they're really getting a degree of learning how to understand finance 101, but it's really buying into the network of peers and professionals that you're going to network with after graduation. So for us, I mean, essentially this is our MBA, right? This is our master's program. And for us, we need to make the opportunity to create this network and alum association for ourselves. So the three of us are using the summer to really work on different ideas and how to formulate this online network. But I think we're gonna parlay off of this, Jesse. This looks great. If you can make a separate page for us. Um, it has to be private access, login with password. Um, one thing that I do want to kind of throw out there for you guys to start thinking about was, um, I want to make this very exclusive. 
as in open up to the top 10% of this program, as in your passion, your dedication, your grades, your recommendations, your network, how much you can put into this program is going to reflect on how much you can also represent us outside of Parsons after we graduate. So that's something that we're thinking about, how to make it very high standards and um, reflecting right to the future students. Like this is who we are. Once you enter this network in, you are part of this community of design thinkers. We will give the job recommendations. We'll help you with networking. We will recruit future students in Shanghai, in Paris, in London, wherever you, you want to go. The point is, I think that the emphasis is put on the quality that we want to create, right? Putting this high standards of our talent, our needs, um, our intellectual creativity. And so that's something that we're working on. Jamil, um, Tara and I are going to work on really the interface, the logo, some of the activities that we're going to do. We're going to ask for a budget from John, um, and we might even put some activities of recruiting students, putting together like little events like this. Um, how do we uh, come together more as a community? Do we get guest speakers to come in and speak to us about industry practices and innovations in the industry? So we have a lot of ideas on the board right now. But whatever ideas you guys have, please email me over the summer. Um, Taryn and Jamil as well, we're all here, right? Taryn, yep. maybe. Uh, I'm out of the country for about two weeks, but I'll be around, so please get in contact and yeah, let's brainstorm, let's talk, let's start this dialogue of how to make this alum network really special and um, you know, like Allison said, we are going to make this for ourselves and how we make it is going to reflect to the world what this program is about. And I think as a progressive program, it's really important for us to make that culture, right? And that was really my um, invitation to you all and you know, great, thank you Rhea for being so gracious to allow us to use this room. Um, it's just been so perfect, you know, so um, so now I just want to kind of take the moment. Do you guys have any questions about this, by the way? There's no name for it, by the way. It's not called Facebook for SDM or anything like that. We're just going to call it, you know, Strategic Design and Management Network. And uh, we'll have some mock-up pages in the logo, and we'll work with Jessica over the summer and put some things up and see how it works out. So, do you guys have any questions about this? Ideas? I come up with a, a funky name. I mean, you should brand yeah. yourself, right? I mean, you guys are interested in kind of identity and marketing, right, and branding. So it'd be great for you to have a no Facebook, mm -hmm. but your own kind of name for this network would be great. If you want to make it elite, uh, you know, well, set uh, whatever. What is the word you use? The global strategic design elite. Exactly. Uh, that's way too long. It would be great to have a good, a good name. Gas. Gas. You know, you also. <laughs> But we have a career, you know, services mm -hmm. out of um, Parsons and the New School. And kind of to provoke them to support you in whatever way they can, I think mm -hmm. is also useful. So we should set up a meeting with them Great. soon, early in the summer, to get that's, them on board. That's right. I actually missed one that was initiated for the graduate directors. Mm -hmm. And that's the perfect uh, moment for me to hand it off to you guys yep. and actually start meeting with them Great. directly. And I can set that up for you, and we can do that together. Wonderful. That'd be fine. Yeah. And we really want this to be uh, an active participation yeah. of students recruiting future students, talking about what this program has done for us, how we envision this helping us our careers, what innovation and education means for this program, right? And so, you know, I see Jamil going off and recruiting people in Paris in the fashion industry, right? And students for a future program. And, Taryn doing wherever she goes, and Mark and Josh, and we really want this to be a very proactive mm -hmm. network, mm -hmm. um, very passionate, and you know, just really connecting as a community. So, great idea. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions about? It aligns with that pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the perfect storm, Jesse. Where all the thoughts are coming together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about keeping it to only the top ten percent of our class? in terms of the grades, GPA, and recommendations. It's controversial. I'm, I'm, that's, that's, that's shoot the bullets. I'm ready. You know, I think it's really, really important for us to discuss this, right? I think I mean, there's what? something on top of that keeping in touch, and I think it's great that we, you know, help us also to create this alumni culture. But I think there's something on top of maintaining the contact, uh, the, the contact and this is what you will be doing, because uh, the so much going on in this world that has no precedence right mm -hmm. now. And I see from students, former students for myself, from here, from other universities that um, it's, it's a fun, I think it's nearly a rule. Most of the students that go back in their home country succeed and most of the students that build something new succeed. And I think that I really can say that now. So I have also former students that succeeded in consulting firms, but I see more students that succeed because they do something about their own business and they build something, something that has no precedence. 
And as this whole world is changing and our, also our education is changing, and this is a very experimental place, and I think it's good that it is. And it's good that we do it together, you know. That's the reason why I'm in academia, because I come from consulting, but in consulting I cannot do what I can do in here with you guys. Many of the things I need. And I think that the, um, this could be a great tool to actually um, catch up and see how those experiments, if you are brave enough to do them, and I think you actually will, because you will see that maybe easier to survive with your money and you know with the living than continue to look for a job at Accenture, right? You continue whatsoever. So to see how that goes, and it's incredibly exciting. I mean, to me, it's incredibly exciting because I see businesses out there I wouldn't have thought about. And I think this is the main issue, and this is also how we, you know, I think that's a great point. That's I think is you know, where I would make it around like a ten best grades, or I don't know. I would really make it around what is the story that you can tell yep. with your endeavor after your studies. So those are the things that we want to iron out this summer. Um, how do we define this quality, right? How do we measure quality in a candidate? And that's, that's a million dollar question that every university wants to ask, right? Uh, but for us, we have to start defining that for ourselves, right? Is it just a GPA? Is it the recommendation? Is it you know, your network? Is it your personal or professional experiences? There's so many facets to that. And so that's something that we will be ironing out this summer. Why the emphasis on having that as an inclusive network to find the students rather than all of the students? So in, and this is something that I, could, I think we can discuss in our more open level, but there is a huge, I think, spectrum of level of dedication and passion that we've seen from different students from all different walks of life. And the way the three of us have envisioned was that we really want this first alum class to be entrepreneurial, to be passionate, to be the ones evangelizing the brand of the school and this program to everyone else. And those who are really working hard and buying into taking advantage of what Parsons is offering us are going to be the ones I see working hardest. You know, and getting those grades and really connecting with the faculty and trying to build a culture. And so our idea was that in the beginning, at least, we have to set that standard and have some sort of way to measure what kind of candidates we want to bring into this network. I like the idea of exclusivity. I think it gives incoming students something to aspire to. If they have such high caliber, whatever this is going to be, yes, I do want it to be that, so I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to be entrepreneurial. I'm going to be, you know, design my blah, blah, blah. Uh, I like it. I think I just like to get the actual qualifications of what that would be. Um, I think grades are a bad choice. I don't think it really gives a spectrum of what a person is capable of. So, but their dedication to measure, I think it also might unfold organically. If you're chosen to do it and you don't do it, then you yeah, I, I think the recommendations from the faculty will also play a huge role in that, right? So. I think it's it's very it's multifaceted. I think you have to apply. I think this notion that you have to apply to this group is really mm -hmm. important. And then you set your criteria for yeah. how you evaluate people who are going to be part of the group. That's great. You already have to do something to be part of this group. It's not just an entitlement. So and, and you could say it could be a project proposal that you you present rather than a GPA if you think that's yes. more important. So you can mm -hmm. set a criteria. I think that's pretty robust. Um, and I think um, that you could agree on right. And the harder you work, the more likely you are to get into this group. You know, if you come up with a great project idea, then that's a way of getting into the group. If you suddenly bring in a partner who has a lot of money or influence, that may be a way to get into the group too. You know, there could be all different ways of evaluating. Which I think is a very important sense. skill. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Similarly, I was just going to say what you um, what you want to contribute mm -hmm. to the group. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some sort of you know thoughtful sentence things that they have to say or a little brief that they have to write and how they can contribute to this group. Mm -hmm. There's also a component of um, the network of us as a community giving back to Parsons, mm -hmm. like where we will recruit and go to events and talk to stu prospective <coughs> students and parents and all that. There's a sense of being a part of the larger community after we graduate. I think that's really important as well. So these are the ongoing discussions mm -hmm. we'll be having this summer. Please feel free to reach out to any three of us. If you'd like to be part of you know, the discussion there, join us. But um, yeah, we'll be building it out this summer. We have something to show you in September as the second class comes in and we'll have the network ready to launch as we graduate next year. I have one comment. Yep. Um, I'm a little opposed to the ex exclusivity for, well, um, I, I understand the whole idea and I, I definitely like it, uh, but I think we need some one, at least one place 
that includes all students, like it's open, as long as it's part of this, as, you know, our, our program. And then whatever the, you know, special group can, I believe we can create <coughs> through more like spontaneous spaces, like, you know, like project based. So like I, I imagine like not just one, but more, more than one group may emerge out of this platform. And then I think that's naturally evolved, you know, by time. So um, I, so first criteria that I really see is, you know, provide something that, you know, include everybody and then, you know, do something, you know, build something on top of it. Yeah. And that's a really valid point to come. Yeah. Um, again, there's no right or wrong answers to this, right? It's like, it's an ongoing process and ongoing discussion. So just know that this is something that we're working on over the summer, so please feel free to join us. And um, yeah, let's think about that, you know? I mean, when we have discussions like this, this is a place where we can safely, you know, brainstorm these ideas and go back and forth and talk about the pros and cons. And so, um, but we're excited, the three of us are excited. I'm sorry we can't show any logos beforehand, but as you know, it's a crunch time and we're working hard on these projects. <laughs> so we want to at least show you a mock-up of the homepage, but we weren't able to do that. So that will be in the fall for our town hall meeting then. And um, yeah, look forward to hearing some ideas from you guys. Great. So we head over to Mr. Jalen over here, our big boss <laughs> director. <laughs> right. Um, you know, until tonight, it felt like running a program and doing something a program. It's really awesome because tonight feels like starting a conspiracy, right? The free designers of America. <laughs> there's rituals, there is there's rights of entry, right? Uh, and we know conspiracies work. Uh, right. So and nothing that you said actually is new, right? Because that's what people discuss. I used to be involved in France. Uh, I didn't uh, join, but I used to be involved with Freemasons in France. And this is exactly the same thing, right? There's junior Freemasons that have to prove themselves. <laughs> that. So, so this, this perfectly makes sense, right? Um, and we could even go that far and say free designers, right? It was the Masons in the pre-industrial age, now it's the designers, right? <laughs> Um, I don't want to uh, waste your time. I'm totally uh, impressed. But besides that, I'm overwhelmed with everything else. So um, ask, ask away the concerns, ideas, things that uh, are floating around so that we can speak to a couple of them and um, keep the conversation going. I'm, I'm particularly liking your, your elegant little and the town hall in the fall. <laughs> As you threw it out, that this is now institutionalized. Like there will be <laughs> town halls. It is a tradition. <laughs> no, today, there will right? be town halls. I also appreciate how elegantly you threw in that I will provide the budget. <laughs> which now. That was my pitch, Sean. <laughs> right? right? no, no, totally, totally. <laughs> any, any, any word that has the budget in it is totally like going under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what can I answer for you? I was thinking that we could take the first half of this question and answer to share with Jonathan our experiences, uh, the courses that we've taken, the experience we've had working with different professors, different projects, our collaborative process. Um, let's just share with them how our first year has come about. And um, Takao was gracious enough to put together a survey. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, he's talked to a lot of students. We've all been talking all year constantly, right? So this is a chance for us to relay that to the faculty, to the people who want to listen. So let's share our experiences. How was your first year? Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, <clears throat> uh, I've enjoyed this uh, program very much. I think that it's exactly what I thought it would be. And I say that because I, I was going into an MBA program, or thinking about going to an MBA program, because that's what you do when you, you're in business for an MBA program. But I wanted something more different, new, something exciting, and uh, I chose this. I find that it gives you the tools to succeed as long as you want to use the tools. Um, it's very much a program that you take what you know as a business person or design person or fashion or tech or whatever, and you use those tools with everybody else to make anything happen. We've never done a gallery space, but here we are. We've never, I've never created internal communication structure, but I've learned how to do it. Um, 
and people around us learn from each other. So I think that's a very different versus what I would have gone to. We go down one path and do one thing. Um, the classes I've taken have been uh, worthwhile. I think that because it was a fast transition from online to on campus, there was some road bumps and was to be expected, but it's a part of the process, you know, and we get the um, opportunity to make it what it should be because we're here now talking about how it should be. Uh, so I like the fact that this is happening right now and this is part of the program because any other place it wouldn't be as um, collaborative in my opinion. Um, I won't be specific on each, each class, but I've enjoyed the process. Is that just in retrospect, do you think? Do you think in the moment you did? In the moment, it was mm -hmm. very, I happen to have a small experience in doing innovation process type. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of went into it knowing what not to expect and kind of what to expect at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, but, but I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I felt that the tools that were given to me, I, able to, to, I was able to do it. Um, so at the time, it was a learning process inside of a learning <coughs> process. Um, but I think now that we have more of an idea of what these, what the context is of what these classes are doing, we take this so that we can do this later. We're taking that so we know how to do this later. I think now it's more of, okay, I know that I'm learning this now so that in my research I'm gonna be more focused and I use that research to inform my studio work. So I think that helps. If I was to say anything that would help the next class is to give that context first. What you're doing, you're, not every class is a silo, it's a part of a big process. And that alone, I think, is very powerful to understand and make a that we didn't have. We talked a little bit, um, I know, at our school leadership council about um, supporting students coming into the program, <coughs> students coming into the program who have maybe a business background but no design background, or vice versa, design students coming in without a business background, and offering you know, a boot camp kind of experience in that. Um, week before school starts in August, so that if you are unsure about your design skills, you could go in and you could kind of learn it in design and um, Photoshop yeah. or something like that, or you yeah. could so learn Excel. Yeah. 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 Actually, what, what, I've, what I've been doing yeah. is, is ever since you all have the, pro the Linda program, yes. I've been watching that every chance yeah. I get. I've learned learning right. Illustrator, so uh -huh. that alone is, has been helping me, but you know, not everybody will know that that's there. Right. It's a part of the process. So. Yeah. So that's part of the orientation process in the fall, which we've talked about. That's right. My, my suggestion would be uh, because, you, you know, feed, feed or inspection, right? Like feedback control is always a little bit tricky because the damage already happened. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> that's, why, that's why we do feed forward control mm -hmm. as designers, which is design the damn thing right in the first place. <laughs> and then concurrent control, kind of like have checkpoints mm -hmm. if the process comes undone and then, so that by the time feedback comes around it's kind of kind of like the Toyota guys right a white glove and <laughs> we just polish you off. We just polish you, right? <laughs> you don't want to find things in feedback right mm -hmm. that, that's kind of like the whole point is to do it so well that by the time feedback comes you spend money on the feedback you have food you have a nice space but in the end you don't find out at feedback time. So if we found out things now, the question is can we still offer something up as kind of like to sweep the deal? So I would say immediately if, and since I need to get together those booster courses before the, before the semester starts, you would obviously be cordially invited to all join them. They will be on a voluntary basis in the sense that um, with the hundred students you know, coming in, right? It's gonna be so large that not we will not be running multiple sections of it. We will run a large section of it, um, and who joins joins, and it might end up with thirty people, right? But um, since there's uh, a lot of you still or already back in the city, you know, it's like come and join us. I will keep you totally informed. No, it's not too late. I mean, when I do a finance course, it rocks because I know exactly what I need to do in finance to have people really understand finance in about a day <coughs> versus you spend 15 weeks in an MBA program and then you go to Wall Street and you get caught, right? Um, 
So if you do that, um, you still can benefit from it. So that may be a little bit of a uh, of a offer in the, in, the, in the mix. Yeah, we didn't have time to think that through. We didn't have time to think a lot of things through because we originally started running a graduate program and now it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Right? That's but, different. Uh, well, we never offered boot camps, period. And now we decided that as a school, particularly now that we have four graduate programs and because people come from and we want them to come from many walks of life, that there is a, you know, a need to help people. And, and, and succeed, right, right, yeah. right, right. And beginning of the semester, boot camps will then turn into periodic workshops. Yeah. Right. On special topics. How do, you, how do I sell myself? Like this, this perennial question. How do I present myself in an attractive way? <laughs> right, right. Uh, how do I? <laughs> how do? You, yeah. How do you? How do you talk to talk of a used car salesman <laughs> selling this program that is so new that it <laughs> will only be mainstream in five to ten years, mm -hmm. right? And you talk about it as eloquently as if it already existed, so that people feel comfortable about it, versus going like, hmm, you know, you're asking a good question. I have thought about it too. That, that's not a good start in an interview, right? Um, but presenting yourself as in, we've gone beyond entrepreneurship. Now we are creating opportunities for entrepreneurs. I think, Christian and I talked about it was like two and a half years ago. We had like this, this moment, and I said something like, creating opportunities for entrepreneurs. You stop for a second and it's like, hmm, that's a good one, right? <laughs> because entrepreneurship has been done before. Strategic has been done before, right? Entrepreneurship was like the first decade of the 21st century. The 90s was strategic because that's when Michael Porter got famous. The 80s were management, right? And we are taking it to the next level. We are doing like the, the, second, the second golden 20s. 20th and the 21st century, and, and that will take time to, to uh, find its roots. Um, and we will create a workshop where we, where we sell it, right? How do you sell something like this? Um, obviously, I did something to sell it to the next batch, right? So how but then how do you go synthesize? Out, but then how do you go out into the world right. as graduates and then right. sell what you know and who you right. are to this world that yeah. doesn't Necessar isn't necessarily ready to hear it, too, right? That's right. And then project management, right? There are certain principles about project management. It's almost like when people say project management, right? Because everybody gets a contract. Whenever you're offered a position these days, right? What are you called? A project manager. Project manager is so nondescript that it can range from making coffee to multi billion dollar decisions with your boss, right? Traveling all over the world. So, Project management is so abused. However, that's silly because project management is a real discipline, right? So there's a disciplined approach to project management in qualitative and quantitative terms. And I, I think we are missing that because our culture has not yet accepted in many undergraduate business programs project management as a discipline. So we are not teaching it correctly. It is kind of like it'll it'll happen. And project management is difficult because it's uncomfortable, right? Operations management is, is solved because it has a beginning and it never ends. Project management is difficult because it has a beginning and it has a deadline. And we don't like deadlines, right? We hate anything that, and then we have to work with stale information. And then two out of three ain't bad, right? Because between quality, budget, and time, you only hit two out of three. It's like meatloaf, bad out of hell. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad. So how do, we, how do we create a little workshop for a day, one Saturday, things that you would want to know that get tested on the PMI exams? Because that's what project management needs to know, right? Things like that. So yes, we recognize that now is also time to implement those kind of things so that we don't have to backfill them all the time in individual classes, right? We can, they're common, so we take them out, we build up module, and people can take that module on a recurring basis so that in class we, we don't have those disturbances, right? Yes, but this came with size, a scale. But scale forces a lot of things to, to morph, and so um, 
the, the scale, the way it's, it's been evolving, will force us to review. It's, it's a very powerful dynamic for both design and design and business plan. Yes. Just augment the program. Can we also suggest, perhaps, or can I suggest, um, or may I, um, workshops about leadership and people management as well? And I think that's something that's really crucially missing from the current MBA programs. How do you work collaboratively with people in a positive way? How do you manage people relationships rather than the projects alone? Because the projects revolve around people, right? And I think um, that's something that all of us don't want to recognize is all of us have flaws in working with each other. It's really part of the process. So even addressing that on leadership, on communication skills, bringing speakers, talking about you know, self-help coaching, whatever it may be, inspiration, whatever it may be. Um, I think that could also really benefit us as well. Well, the whole language of collaboration. Right? Yeah. What, what words you use and what you don't use, it, the way you set up the room, so it's not right. kind of a hierarchical thing. All of those things, I think, would be great to do. Yeah. And, and in general, like this, this aspect that it's <coughs> not about things, it's not about, it's about experiences, right? There are two underlying assumptions for the entire program, and I think Mark, when you say it kind of like came together programmatically, there's, look, you're spending this 50,000 plus dollars to learn essentially two things in two years for the rest of your life, right? And that is, all projects are impossible and all people are difficult, <laughs> right? And it takes time. It took me 25 years <coughs> to be able to start transmitting that, right? So this is a shortcut. This is a very valuable, cost-efficient shortcut. Um, so, so if that comes through, and if it doesn't come through enough, then we'll tab on these type of leadership course. But leadership is not about leaders, right? And leadership is not about leader personalities. Leadership is about an effect. And leadership exists without leaders, right? It's about the effect. It's kind of like the, uh, the spaceship enterprise, right? There is the William Shatner enterprise that existed before our time, and we are implementing, or, you know, an enterprise was a futuristic model, so we are implementing Captain Picard, right? Captain Picard, when you have a problem, you come to Captain Picard and you say, Captain, we have a problem. And he goes, so how would you solve that problem? Right? That's Captain Picard. Shatner was like, okay, I know it, right? Mm -hmm. He knew everything and he just solved it for them. And he commanded everybody around. And the whole experiment is, it's almost like mini Google, right? If you get the intelligent people into the room and to agitate them, something beautiful has got to come out, right? Now, Google did that with 26,000 smartest people in the world. Fine. We'll do it with 26 months. Right? But I agree, it's not about the project and the formalities. It's about the character, right? Your character is evolving, or at least you're grooming it. You probably can't change it much anymore after you're six years old. It's stuck. But you're grooming it. You're enabling certain aspects of your character that were latent. You didn't know you had, right? In an MBA program, you learn how to be a personality. And you put on different hats and you have different personalities. You have a professional personality and the family personality. Here, it's about character. It goes to the core. That's why sometimes it's not as comfortable as you think it should be, right? More suggestions like that is a great suggestion. I mean, part of design is that we need to get under the skin of people. So I always say in observations, you're there when people start swearing. So talk about the bad things. Another thing we know from design is fail often to succeed sooner. So what are other suggestions? What is missing? Uh, you have um, people who have submitted the, um, the questionnaire. So uh -huh. you have a summary of what people have. Did you, I the culture. Sure. Well, no, Takao or Esther, just the, the result. I'm just curious about the questionnaire that was sent and the results of so any suggestions and you have summaries or. There are only two posts. Post. Okay. Out the do you have the data? I do. Um, I can pull it up. But two posts. So summaries. Yeah, the two people have uh, responded. Um, I'm happy to share that with you guys. There are some strategies from theatre, from performance, about um, 
scenario building, um, embracing different parts of your personality, um, developing kind of public speaking and persona that are based on character, not on, you know, I'm the greatest leader in the world and I'm better than you are kind of techniques that I think are worth exploring. And, and people across the new school, the drama people have done workshops with first year students, for example, on you know, putting yourself in a difficult situation, how do you deal with it? Working with people who don't want to work with you, how do you get them on board in a project? Those kinds of things that I could imagine would be a great workshop to have, just to kind of explore some of those techniques and see what's available. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are doing work in this area at the moment, and it's really useful and helpful to, to do it. So I could see that would be helpful generally as a kind of workshop. So this was our first posting. Um, describe your points. This program is catered to those who want to create knowledge rather than acquire knowledge. Framing it this way is a better way to understand what is expected of you and what is to be expected out of the program. However, there needs to be an improvement in organizing this program so this can be done in an effective manner. <coughs> the evaluation was given two out of, to Kyle, what was it? Uh, scale one to five. The five is the worst, one is the best. Great. Can, 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 can you collectively, as maybe you read it before, I didn't read it for the first time, but the sentence, there needs to be improvement in organizing this program so this can be done in an effective manner. What does that mean? I, it's not my right. No, 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 I'm asking like, <laughs> even, even uh, Alison or, or, or Rare, do, does anybody know what that means? Because I don't know what that means. Does it mean that the program is disorganized? Does it mean that you don't have access to information about the courses? Does it mean faculty are disorganized? No. What does it mean? No. Or what structure is missing? Yeah, here? yeah. Mm. Is it a structural? No, but in, in your minds, I mean, independently yeah. from what, what, yeah. is, as a structure, what, is, what is missing? Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about chaos in design, and I think also yeah. this program is very important, but chaos without vision is nothing. So mm -hmm. what is that? What, I mean, what, what, if, can you relate to that? And if you can relate to that, what are your thoughts on Maybe it's because the, the, kind of the idea of the program is strategic design, is, is how I see it, mm -hmm. from the wrong, but what, from what I'm reading. The, uh, the name of the program is Strategic Design Management. Mm -hmm. By the word management, we assume there is some specific framework exists, mm -hmm. and you have to learn that the choir knowledge about this framework that exists. <coughs> and the course is built upon kind of more creative approach. And uh, that's what the idea, to kind of bring out of us what we don't even know we have. And this is what is confusing, because there is not a lot of concentration, not even concentration, as I said to you, it's like, we didn't go over a lot the readings, which I think fabulous, but because the course is not structured the way that whatever you read, you don't discuss literally in class in terms of kind of like examples <coughs> on real life scenarios, applications in real life, or some kind of case studies, as you mentioned, I think for like a year ago, that it's not, this program is not based on case studies, I remember that. That was, I think, that's what this message is about. Mm -hmm. By the word management, it's kind of already clear, it has to be a kind of structure, like a form of structure, of course. Okay, that, that makes sense. That's it, how I be, Because there's a little bit of a unfortunate flaw, and that's because the program is called Strategic Design and Management. Right, and I was originally careless about it when people tossed it around, but if I had to be a little bit more careful about it today, I would say it's not design and management, it's design management. Mm -hmm. Now, design management is a fundamentally different discipline from management. Management, I can teach to my Essentially, give me the resources that I will define and identify for you to implement this for you, and then I will do it. So, a lot of it is execution, right? Design management is creating logos from chaos. That's a different approach, right? As a discipline. So, this distinction, it's, it's, it's not a management program, it's a design management program, but it's forward looking in the sense strategy means creating the future, right? Strategy does not, um, it, it means many things to many people, but essentially it means creating the future where everything is moving. Um, so there's, there's no such thing as a strategic plan in a drawer, right? You cannot put a strategic plan in a drawer. A strategic plan only exists when you 
execute it, when you implement it, when you when you're action, action plan, right? So if that clarifies a little bit why there's this sped up, right, uh, learning curve that we are forcing on you, the caveat being that now that we have everybody together after a year, we are realizing that there are essentially two groups. Designers with not extensive business background and business people with not extensive design thinking background. Okay? So fusing this together doesn't happen to spontaneous combustion. Right? Just because you're putting people that are incomplete together does not mean they will complement each other. So we need to do our homework and we need to provide some of that background, right? Um, I, I would totally subscribe to that, but I would say organizing, this is a very lean and mean organization for what we are able to work with, right? And I'm pretty, how should I say it? I don't want to use the word impressed as in like, I'm impressed with myself that it actually worked this lean and mean, but it's pretty impressive that you held it together, right? Because if I had done this with any other type, like MBA people or executive management of technology people, I probably would not be sitting here. I would probably be in the middle of a pole. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, but I totally understand what, what you're saying. And, it made me think of when you use the word management separately from design management. Um, there's a danger in the way we, we use the ampersand in the, in the title. And also, if I can kind of add for myself, what I was kind of uh, missing in, in some classes, and what I actually get from some classes, but what I was missing in future classes is that um, the reasons are really great, and the um, resources are really interesting. But I think that um, they should be more utilized in the program. Because just to give us an assignment to read it, it's not enough for me. I kind of still see it as a school, no matter how much kind of freedom we have, and how, it doesn't matter how adult we are, it's still a school. And if you have this kind of, like you go to the class, and the instructor really ask you a question, and if you answer, there's no, incorrect answer and then it's kind of in the discussion people start to kind of speak up their minds and really discuss the material. I think it's very helpful to really understand the material. It's kind of really remember the material at some point. That's how I kind of feel. More integration of And maybe less material with more reflection versus more reading with expecting uh, the reflection to happen. Um, I could, I should tell you that you probably now say things to me that I may understand better than anybody else because I have now a 19 year old son that is absolutely not an autopilot. And, and my, my character is I want to put everybody as soon as possible on autopilot. Right? It's like, here's the material, you know how to read. Right? That's, that's how I work and I would, I, I appreciated how it evolved for me and because it was successful it, it shortened a lot of learning periods into small chunks. But it may not be may not be practicable for everybody. And I see now with my son, he needed way more attention, you know. And then what's it, because people learn differently, right? You have people that learn in a motoric way and you have people that learn in an information processing way, right? Abstractly. And and being that it's a still it's a batch process, right? It's very tricky to, to implement it. So we may not got it right the right the first time around and we'll will improve on that part. We have one year to do something about it. And maybe this will bring people from the business world and design world together, because there will be different mm -hmm. opinions. Yes. 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 Different ideas, mm -hmm. and people will learn from each other. 
because we can look at the same thing differently. Yeah. Yeah. You can see red, I can see yellow. So I, I can tell you that this particular integration will happen very violently in the research module, especially I teach one of the boards. Um, because that's where this differentiation between design and business starts failing. Right? There are certain certain discipline and principles that you have to apply. You have to put yourself to the ringer before you can say, I'm, I'm complete as a graduate student because I know how to produce evidence. Right? I, I know how to substantiate things. And so, that may be the integration one. Unfortunately, we cannot put it in the front where it would have been more useful because it would have created that, that um, autopilot already because it's so evolved, right? You need to have something to work with. You need to see elements of phenomena to be able to run after it, and so you needed some exposure before. But I think uh, we can take care of it. I, I can commit to take care of it immediately in the next sixth grade module and uh, looking at the regulatory and ethical course, it's also neither one nor the other. It's about how the new firms in the new economy use this new ethical environment to project themselves in a good way and sometimes in a bad way, the dark side of uh, complex information technology and tense terms, right? So it'll 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 be taken care of. But um, no, I just wanted to share the second point. Yeah. And, and, and we we yeah we need to uh, Right. Just a second point. Um, another student wrote, like you see examples in other schools, we should and must have a real project with a real client to solve issues in group setting. Instead of having independent study, we should have more time to collaborate and solve real issues as part of the core class. So that's another suggestion, right? Instead of trying to come up with our own topics and silo projects, that there is room and opportunity for us to really collaborate as almost professionals in an academic setting. So this is an interesting point. This is a totally interesting point, but whoever thought it and articulated it that way, I think I want to commend them because at the same time, they are producing a solution as they are critiquing it because right. you don't need us. Like, like Many of you have not seen my face all semester, and it'll, it won't get better, I can promise you that. Because I don't matter. What matters is what you're doing, right? So if you need more collaboration, can it happen with the leadership effect? Can it happen without the leader, right? You could always make it happen as you see fit. That's why you, you are the adults here, right? You, but I think what this point is saying is that giving that opportunity to collaborate within classroom settings, within classroom time, to kind of collaborate and really tackle real life issues and challenges to say, as SNM students, we want to create solutions for this. Absolutely. But here's one last, and, and I want to make this quick. Whenever you're using these big concepts like real life issues, how do you know that what is not yet being done in a consultancy today is not a real life issue tomorrow, right? Those are very difficult, loaded terms. I mean, the uh, I'm obsessed. You know, I, I'm I grew up in Germany, lawyer, Jewish, right? It doesn't get worse than that when it comes to language and being pedantic about creating meaning. So you have to very carefully think about how do you actually give meaning to this largely unintentional or, or low intent terms, right? So when you say real life issues, right? What is a real life issue? And then, uh, so that's, that's what I think is when you start thinking about it very carefully, it kind of like also goes away. Can I relate this some question really? This. So this gives me some idea that uh, um, the trans Z, I don't know much about it, but uh, you know, seem like they also tackle in this manner. And then that gave me a question that uh, who, wh what is this really program is about? And then um, the question that I'm having and not being clear is um, really 
where are we positioning ourselves in this you know whole context of you know society innovation that um, I, I pose a question before I enroll the school that how is this problem different from different other schools like you know Institute of Design in Chicago or D school or other business school now teaming up with uh, you know art schools and then art schools now teaming up with graduate uh, business schools and we keep hearing from faculties that we are very different we're receiving very different kind of education are we is that different kind of education is similar to those I mentioned, or is this completely new thing? Things that uh, we, you know, none of the schools is still yeah, you know, uh, along, doing. Along with chaos pilots, along with uh, Alto in Finland and uh, 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 Toronto, right? Along with CCA, are they're all discovering the need to fuse design thinking, meaning detach the thinking part of design from the doing part. Mm -hmm and fuse it with the business logic and the economic logic that has been out there, but, but by itself it doesn't work, right? Neither purely inductive nor purely deductive reasoning works. You, you apply them together, right? Hypothetical deductive model. Neither pure design thinking by itself and economic logic by itself doesn't work, right? Because nothing is fully rational and nothing is fully irrational. It doesn't help to say to people, here's what I'm going to give you as resources, create this from that. Logos from Logos, we've done for a long time. It doesn't produce the results that we want. So we are different, but that doesn't mean that we are the only ones. But if you say there's only five or six places to do it, that's pretty unique, mm -hmm. right? The next place is a 1,000 miles away. Yeah. Right? So yes, we are positioning. Uh, difference between trans, trans D and us is that we are not across the social sciences, and we are not making, right? We're not really making too much either, I would say. The, uh, I would say the difference for you is that um, yeah, I wonder, this. sorry, at the end of your first year, whether you can so clearly differentiate yourselves as being either a business person or a design person, and that is the real difference in this program, is you're not collaborating with, I'm not a business person collaborating with an artist, I'm actually in school here learning to act in a designerly way as a business person or uh, as a business, uh, you know, that, that they, these things fuse at yeah. some point. At the end of your first year, I imagine that's what you're starting to see. You're being transformed. That's right. You, and that's you're totally you're dissolving, right? If you yeah. are a business person, you're dissolving into this new fusion paradigm. And if no. you are a design person, you're dissolving into this different. Yeah. All of a sudden, you discover you have business acumen that you didn't know you oh. activate. Well, I was saying trans D is they're still keeping the position as their own. Discipline. So they're using practices and designerly practices and skills mm -hmm. and, and using those to act in the world on particular mm -hmm. problems. Okay. You're working in a different way, I think. So I we have to have a hard stop to the presentation. Yeah, otherwise it have been hour. Have a hard attack. Right. <laughs> but uh, can we just thank um, John and Allison for I mean these are some not, they're not easy questions, right? And they're not easy answers. But thank you for coming today and yeah, very yeah.